Gio, well, I guess this will not be our first episode of the new year. It'll be our third episode of the new year, but we haven't really connected. Happy new year. Happy new year to you. It'll be our first episode of the year predicting 2024. How's that? It will be. It'll be. Yes, it will be. And by the time this airs, we will have gotten to hang out in San Francisco. You never come to town. I'm so excited. Well, Yay. it's funny because I was working with with Mark on some stuff with Liquid Space, and we've got something going on there. And I'm like, one of us should really be there. And he's like, I don't know if I can make it. And I'm like, I'm happy to make it because mm-hmm. I get to see Jamie in Yay. her backyard. And so totally. hopefully I'll get to spend some time with you. And I reached out to Scott Chambers and Reed Thompson and try to try to get as much as I can get in in 24. I guess I'll be there right about 72 hours, less than that. So, well, there's a development near me. I have to show it to you because it's perfect for somebody. So since you're in town, we're going to walk, we're going to walk by it. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to see on Tuesday what I can. We have a bunch of stuff on Tuesday. That's why I was like, I could hang out with you, but we have a podcast recording on Tuesday. I have two. Yeah. Oh, shoot. At night. Luckily. Well, you're, today's your, is today officially your last day in the mountains? You headed home? Yeah, we finally got some powder yesterday. We've had like no, I mean, there's snow on the ground from whatever, you know, it snowed a little bit, but not while we're here. So we've been here for a while. So fresh powder in time for you to go home. Yeah, but we got some yesterday, so I'll take it. And then we just needed okay. a little like optimism that we're going to get more. Well, good. Well, I'm yep. glad that you're headed yep. home. Yep. When's okay. Dagny go back to school? Monday. She has stuff tomorrow. Okay. And then I booked, yes, I am booked solid tomorrow. Um, busy, busy, which is going to sag nicely into our, t- wait, wait, tell me where you are. You're in Florida. I'm in Florida. Just uh, finished meetings with UFG, also known as Vast, co-working, also known as VentureX, also known as... Office Evolution, also known as, by the time this airs... Go, oh, good point. By the time this airs... Oh, okay. This is... Also this known right as <laughs> Intelligent Office. So they've officially... I was informed that they've officially uh, acquired Intelligent Office. And funny enough, I was fl- flying in to have a kickoff meeting with the real estate team. And the real estate team didn't even know officially. So I went to dinner last night to meet the real estate team and the executive team for Vast walked in with the executive team from Intelligent Office. I was like, "Mm, I didn't know dinner was this big and why are you here? And (laughs) voila, I, I I was invited to the closing dinner, I guess, essentially between the executive teams. And I was sworn to... 18 hours of secrecy, which by the way, Jamie got a, uh, I know something you don't know and I can't tell you. <laughs> You're Very kidding. You me. did not just do that. <laughs> well, I couldn't keep it in. I had to know, I had to I say that I knew something that I couldn't well, and I, say. I wasn't going to ask you because I was like, if I prod him, he's going to tell me and then I'll get in trouble. <laughs> no, I would. I don't think I, I, I'm, had you called them, I'd have told you. I wasn't going to text it, but <laughs> if, no if Jason Anderson no was watching this, there was no chance I would have ever said anything to anyone. So, so yeah, I mean, I think, so today's uh, podcast is essentially about predictions for 2024. So what a better way to kick it off than, uh, than that exactly, right? We're going to continue to see consolidation. We're going to continue to see just mergers and acquisitions overall, in addition to to being space that's handed back and then it's picked up by another operator. So, I mean, the the industry is just going to continue growing and some is going to be same brand is growing. Some are going to be, you know, different brands being acquired. And, and then last of all, I think there's going to be continued organic growth by existing brands. Okay. So I have some questions about that. Um, yeah. Okay. So number one, Geo's prediction is let's call it more acquisitions. I want to dig into the acquisitions. Yeah, so, perfect. do you think Vast will do another one in 2024, or do you think one a year is we're maxed out? So funny enough, you and I exchanged this earlier. The so episode one mm-hmm. of Flex on Censor was Ever? we we coordinated specifically to have Jason Anderson on with the acquisition of Office Evolution by VentureX, right? So that was our very first episode. You heard it here first. Yep. And then that's why when I 
thought about it earlier. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to call Jamie and we've got to get someone from Vast on, which by the time you you see this, you've heard the, or Mm -hmm. listen, you've heard the one with Paula Mercer, which will go live, I guess, last week. But I mean, I think that's, that's a big part of it is their goal is to be, I don't have my shot glass, Bond boy, right? They're trying yeah. to be the Bond boy of co-working. And so as we all know, Bond boy's got over 35 brands now. And so to answer your question is, I said, I think they'll acquire other operators and they'll acquire them as quickly as they can. Oh, right. And so, okay. I don't know. Capital is not a, be no, this year. No, no problem with capital. No, I mean, with the right deals, they they can find, you know, they get really strategic. Of, I mean, they've been doing this a long time. So they're very strategic about how they go out and acquire these. And I mean, Jason's been having a lot of conversations. I know that as a, uh, overall um, with with various groups. And so it all it's all timing, as you well know. I mean, what didn't make sense six months ago makes sense today. And what made sense months ago six months ago doesn't make sense today right and so same thing applies um as as we have these conversations right is the there we're going into i mean this year is going to be a really interesting year right to begin with every election year is is already has enough chaos of its own now we've added a socio-political agenda and things that are going on on multiple fronts you've added in financial markets that are shifting and changing, right? I'm, I've heard everything from interest rates aren't going to come down for yeah. another year to two yeah. to there's going to be four to five drops this year. I don't know, right? We don't know what that, how that plays out. Gas prices, we've got, you know, war and other issue, political issues globally that are going on. And so I think there's a lot of things that are affecting those things. And I think that will affect um acquisitions yeah without a doubt well right i suppose if somebody has capital or strategic deal structures that don't require a lot of capital up front faster growth than construction which is super expensive right now okay i think vast needs a premium even more premium than venturex i think we need to go the other end of the spectrum yeah without a doubt i mean Again, and Jason, if you're listening, even, that's my that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and, but but even then, if you look at, I mean, let's take, I mean, let's again, let's just stick to Bond Boy. If you take the Ritz Carlton, yeah, they've got four seasons. They've got the Ritz Carlton. They bought the autograph line. Those three right there are all super Wait, hot. Bond Boy has the autograph. Yeah, we stayed at an autograph in Rome. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so even that's high end, but it's high end boutiquey. Right. The Ritz Carlton is high end luxury, and the Four mm-hmm. Seasons is what I would call a high end luxury almost. I mean, yeah, they're not like super bougie like the Ritz, but they're all high end, yeah, platforms and brands. And so the answer, I think they could they could add multiple of these, right? Yeah. And so I'd like to see them add maybe something boutiquey that gets them into. Here's my one of my predictions: food and beverage. I think, yeah, I think ventures i think the industry is going to start adding food and beverage it's not easy you know i we talked about i toured some spaces in london did they all have food and bev i mean it was a pretty serious trend like the cafe in the front great vibe great amenity for members just not a lot of brands doing that here so i think we we need to experiment and figure out that model so I think Vast could use a brand that helps them learn how does that work and have sort of a premium experience, even more premium than VentureX for their portfolio. No, well, agree completely, right? I mean, I mean, to me, VentureX is if I'm using something, I know that I've heard them use the Four Seasons, I would probably use something closer like the W than yeah. I would mm-hmm. yeah. um, Four Seasons. So I think you had the opportunity to do that. And so, you know, I think even stepping out from there, I think you're going to see some of the other brands. I mean, you've seen IWG do it, right? They changed from yep. Regis to IWG because now they've got Regis the traditional. They've got Signature, which is kind of a merge between mm-hmm. Regis traditional and a Spaces. So there's three brands right there. Then they have Regis Express, not in the US, but they have it overseas. They've got their, what's the, it's a number, number 18, 18. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's in, number 18. In Atlanta, which is over the top social club type of yeah, deal that's that what I'm talking about. wasn't monetizable, right? Yeah. 
No, 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 um, not scalable, not kind of a weird. Yeah. But, but and then they've got and they've got a couple others in like Asia and stuff like that. But so we're going to continue to see that, right? So in my opinion, we're going to see industries continue to try to figure out do they come up with another brand that allows them to grow outside of the urban cores, right? Because right, yeah. you can't take that brand of the secondary and tertiary markets, right? Yeah. I think you you can yeah. you cannibalize. Well, and, they had that experiment. Uh, we should get somebody on to talk about the experiment they were doing with Aval was it Avalon Bay. They were doing those little like outposts of 2000 square yeah. feet. And we were like, how's that going to work? You don't think it's going to work. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. work, right? I mean, yeah. it's almost like what Regis tried with Regis Express. They're just, they're just, I mean, they're, they're just not monetizable. They're not big enough. I mean, you have to have a pretty significant network of hub and spoke to even get spokes on your spokes, because that's what that ends up being, right? right? Is a spoke on your spoke, right? Try riding a bike with a spoke on a spoke. It just doesn't work very well. And so I, I think you're going to see industrious have to figure that out. I think that you're going to see, you know, as we work comes out of this, right? They, they bought a uh, common desk. As, as you well know. So I think we're going to see some continued change, changes and shifts there because, I mean, even WeWork, if you think about WeWork, they have WeWork, they had the HQ model at one point, right, that they were doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they did, they bought Common Desk. So I think you're going to continue to see that brand diversification, right? So, I mean, if we're using prediction one is growth overall, right? And yeah. so I think that's from acquisitions to some of these are just continued uh, brand growth and creativity on platforms, right? I think, and I, I'm, I'm not a marketing person, but I have been in this side of the business for 10 years and then 10 years on the retail side. You, you have to have brand di diversification and identification from that. I mean, is like, you've got the W and then you have the A loft by W, right? Mm -hmm. They, they didn't name, a uh, watered down version of the W, W junior, or just yeah, the W, yeah. because then you have an expectation. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I'm staying in an AC hotel, which is kind of a newer kind well, of I've never been business. in an AC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So an AC is like a Marriott by courtyard for business people. So right about the same plat price point, but it's it's on the bougier side, right? You walk in and they have a big open area. You like bougie. But I, yeah. I, <laughs> No, I'm not as bougie as you, but not I do like bougie. bougie. <laughs> um, but I kid you not, I was probably 15 feet from the front door and I could already smell the the smell of the, the hotel because they have scents. The scents. You know, W uses the scents. Yeah. Lots of these use scents. And so I know what, when I walk into one of these places, it's going to look like, right? Last night I stayed at a Fairfield. I knew what a Fairfield was going to smell oh, like. Right. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> no, I, that's just it, right? Is you start getting an experience, you know what you're getting, right? And so it's almost like when I go to convene, I know what I'm getting in a convene, right? Is yeah, you do. high end hospitality <laughs> with, yep. you know, multiple touch points from Amazing a hospitality food. standpoint from their team, right? Yep. We can have a discussion over, do they have too many team members or not all day long um, versus an industrious where I'm getting a person and a half, maybe two people in the center. Again, great locations, great build out, but- there's times where I walk in and there's not someone sitting at the front desk and you know me, I help myself. Gio likes to be greeted. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gio likes but, a, little, I mean, a little fanfare when he arrives. <laughs> oh, duh. I mean, this is coming from someone who's like, I can't believe it. I walked in a space in London and no one knew who I, I was. Totally. I for sure like some fanfare. Uh, but yeah, Everybody so does. Well, I mean, People I like think, to be seen, I think that's know. true. True story. Yeah. But I mean, okay, I, think that's I have a, one more thing to say about part. acquisitions. They're not that easy. It's not that no. they're not that many big brands. Although even Kurt, I loved Kurt's email. Has anybody heard of these guys? They have eight locations. Where have they been hiding? So, hey, if you're listening and you have eight locations, we'd like to talk to you. And yeah, I'm about to admit something pathetic that I probably shouldn't admit. Like I just got off a GWA board call uh -huh. in which we're trying to figure out some different things, right? From And you, you used to run the organization, so you know it. We're trying to figure out, okay, who are we? What are we? How are we yeah. serving people? Mm -hmm. And this is all shifted and changed, right? Because yeah. there's no more people that are involved. There's more vendors. There's all kinds of stuff. And one of the questions that one of our board members asked is how many locations or how many brands is there in the U.S.? There were six of us on the call. Nobody knew. Four of us answered it, including myself. 
And I was the last one to answer with a caveat of it's pathetic that none of us know on this call how, how many, many brands there are yeah, or how many spaces there are. Oh, I mean, right? that, yeah, 8,000 spaces in the U.S., six to eight, but right, brands. Right. But well, again, six brands. Days, how do we not know, you know, I, yeah. someone threw out five, someone threw out seven, someone threw out eight, someone threw out over 10. And that's the problem with our industry is yeah. it's not new, but it's not mature and sophisticated from the standpoint of like back to hotels is I can buy a star report and tell you exactly how many rooms yeah. are in the submarket where I'm sitting, what the average average occupancy is, what the average rate is, and understand all those things. We don't have that. And so at some point, we've got to figure all these things out in a way to consolidate stuff. And you and I have had conversations with Instant, with Liquid Space, with Office R&D, you name it. And it's going, how, how do we create something that consolidated so that we have a better understanding for the industry as a whole as to what's going on? Yep. Yeah. Well, right. So the industry is fragmented. And I think that makes acquisitions challenging because I, I, I mean, the, the vast strategy, it makes a lot of sense because they can acquire, they can acquire brands that don't have to line up with their specific brand identity, right? So they're, they're buying a portfolio of brands that each bring something different. We talked about this already. The challenge with like an industrious going and buying an operator is there are not other spaces that are, you know, ready to be industrious. It's a, it's challenging to buy other operators. I also think generally if an operator, not always, but generally if an operator's for sale, not going that well. So what's the opportunity, right? Well, and, and here's, let's even think about it from an, a bigger standpoint, right? Is what is, and we've had rate, to, we've had Jason Anderson on talk about the acquisition with Office Evolution. We've had Ray Titus come on and yeah. talk about, just UFG as a whole and his position on co-working in the future of work. And we're going to have Paul on from an operation standpoint, talk about what does all this look like? Because I know what was going on behind the scenes when OE was acquired by Venture X, everything from what the franchisees opinions were on both sides to what was going on on the operations team on both sides, I, just all of it in general. But the the other side of it is also... If you stop and you think about what other acquisitions are there, right? What's made a vast three, technically really two acquisitions, right? VentureX was an acquisition, but that's how, they're, how they started the platform. Yep. Second, OE was a franchise group, right? With 80 plus mm -hmm. locations that had kind of stalled and hadn't been able to be overall financially stable, if you will. The family that owned it basically, or the two families, I think, that owned it basically got sick of cutting checks and- you know, they, they, it was time to move on, right? And so there was franchisees involved. The acquisition with Intelligent Office, don't know a whole lot about what their financials were. I know that they brought in Heather Harris to kind of help stabilize and figure out growth and all those great things. And we had Heather which, on. Way, we should do We should do. We had her, no, we had her on a few episodes ago. Yeah. So maybe we put a link tied to Jason. Yeah, we should. On Ray it, and... On it. Yep. But... but the reality is they're another franchise group with 50 locations, 55 locations, I want to say, and 42 yep. franchisees. Yep. Stop and go, what other franchise is there for them to acquire? There isn't, right? I mean, other than maybe a one on, you know, a group that we may not know about that's licensed or something Licensed, like that. Yeah. So yep. A franchise is easy to acquire. It's still complicated, right? But it's yeah. easy to acquire for franchise group. But for you to go acquire a operator that's not franchised, that let's just use Flip as an example, right? If they went in and acquired Flip, which the conversation may or not have been had, then Flip has 20, whatever, 25 locations. Mm -hmm. He's not going to stay on as a franchisee and pay royalties on those 25 locations, right? right. I mean, the goal right. is... Do you get franchisees to come on and buy those locations? Well, now you've added a whole new dynamic. You got to get 25 people, whether one by one or in chunks, yep. to agree to take over leases yeah. to then pay you a royalty to take over, right? So those acquisitions are way more complicated yeah. because I know UFG well enough. And Ray Titus is not taking on 25 corporate leases. Yep. Um, 
in order to go turn around and sell them. He's not closing until he's got 25 people ready to take those 25 deals and not have to carry any of that liability, right? And I could be wrong, but I think I know Ray pretty well. And so that's the reality is these acquisitions become more difficult, right? Is there franchise groups outside of the US that that could potentially happen? One, or is there brands outside the US that you could bring to the US and franchise, right? And, you know, how do you do that? What does that look like? I don't know. But I mean, those are all dynamics that this isn't a corporate entity going, it's not a PE firm going and acquiring other right. companies that they're going to yeah. run as corporate locations, right? So, which, by the way, I do think that we will see that in the next few years. I do think that a PE group will come in and buy one of these who? Give me an example. and decide to grow it like who? from a PE standpoint. Like who? I mean, Shift, I love the Shift brand, right? I think you you could grow Shift across the entire country. You could. Uh, okay, so they're going to, I mean, PE usually wants something that's a little bit like not optimized already. Shift is pretty. But let's back up. We can argue all day long that they're great in the three locations, but why aren't they at eight to 12 locations yeah, in Denver? So scale. So there's an right. opportunity to scale. So Number yeah, one. they could turn on some Number operational, two. right. 100%. Horsepower and, and, just and I, kinda, if there's a group that goes in and, and acquires- Actually, Vast should buy Shift. That's a great example of a bougie brand with- I know you're probably working on it. Okay, Food and Bev. That, I like, yeah. that's, I'm going to put that on my predictions list. <laughs> yeah. Is that too and specific? So here's, here's <laughs> a, a, again, back up. They only have three locations, right? They don't no, have 50 but pot, still they're right? bougie and they have a culinary concierge. I love that. For sure. Hundred yeah. percent, which goes back to my point of your question of who would a, you know why would yeah. a P group and who would they acquire? Okay. But the other side, in my again prediction long term, right? This is a I think a three to five year okay. prediction. Okay, is a P group is going to put be put together and they're going to go acquire firms, right? They're going to acquire, and I'm going to throw out names. None of these conversations are being yeah, had, so right. don't no sense they're all hypothetical attorneys or right. You know, I think you're going to get. You know, you got Cato. Cato's got what? Yeah. Uh, they're they're pushing double figures in locations, right? They own their real Cato. estate. Yeah. Uh, you've got Fuse in Austin that has, you know, currently they own three locations where they own their buildings too. You got Shift, we just talked about. You've got, I mean, another about, big one. Firm Space. Firm Space has a handful, right? Yeah. Close um, Chicago. Did you see the, that? The problem with Firm Space is they don't have any they don't have any mass right from the standpoint of shift's got three locations in denver Ooh. fuse has three locations in austin yeah Cato's they got don't have any hub and spoke eight yeah They're yeah right yeah you know then you look at a cohatch right cohatch has how many locations already throughout the country right privately owned yeah but, but again model different again, brand. I don't it's know a funky model but again Let's be honest. I mean, there's plenty of funky models out there. It makes money, right? If it makes money, Pacific, um, right? Pacific is another no, one, right? Pacific, yeah. 25 North. Laurent's not, not, not the youngest, right? Laurent's getting if Laurent, ready if you're to listening, retire. you didn't mean that. <laughs> I, I meant it, right? He's ready to retire, he would tell you, right? You've got, and we've seen other people do it, right? I mean, we there's people that are, just get to the point where they're like, you know what? I'm ready to cash in my chips and, and move on. Yeah. And, you know, you've got Pacific, you've got Pipeline, right? Or we're, I think we've been talking yeah. to Philippe about getting Pipeline are, on. You've I got, didn't know Pipeline. Have they, been to the, yeah. have they been to the conference? I don't know if he has, but it'll be great. To, I'm actually meeting him tomorrow here in Miami. And then, okay, yeah, and I guess the next couple of weeks on here, we're recording with him next yeah. week. But really smart guy, Harvard grad, has done really well. Take further. You've got, I always butcher this, Burrow down. Michael, in, that guy has yeah. been grinding for a long time. Right? We should yeah, have Michael on. Let's get Michael locations. on. Yeah. I, I'm working on it. You've got okay. Laura. Who We've got Laura scheduled Laura. Uh, with Quest, right? Yep. Who's been grinding for a while. So there, there is, pl people don't stop. And I mean, you just mentioned, I mean, the, the text that we got or email we got from Kurt asking about someone that's got eight locations. And I'm like, I, I don't even yeah. know who these people are. Mm -hmm. And next, so next prediction. That's yours. I gave up with the first one. <laughs> no, mine was food and beverage. You got a list. Mine's food and beverage that more brand, brands will start to experiment with integrating food and bev. 
Well, and I think the bigger part about it, we've been talking about this for a while. It's not just the brand, it's the asset, right? And so if you look at the overall office office model is broken, right? Is these large middle to large office buildings have cafes that are operated by an individual operator who literally is typically like a donut shop. It's a family that runs it. It's an individual. They're working up, they're waking up early to grind for breakfast. They're open till about two or three. They're typically, they're typically not paying rent. They're typically paying a percentage of rent because they don't make enough money unless it's the assets big enough. Yep. But in most cases, the landlord is basically funding the the operation to some extent, almost like a gym, right? It's an yep. amenity. Yep. And so I think a lot of those went out of business during COVID and haven't been brought back because yep. there's not enough people to drive. It was already an issue to for one of those operations to be funded by the people in the building. You were hoping for people to walk from one of the adjacent right. buildings or just right. be like, oh, they've got a great sandwich shop and you stop by from somewhere else, but not 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 likely. So I think that these landlords are now looking for operators that are going to be able to program the building. And that includes F&B. It yeah. includes the overall programming for events, right? Happy hours or, you know, ice cream. Institutional landlords. Social. You're talking about institutional landlords. Like somebody. Well, and I, mean, I mean, let's define institutional, right? I mean, I think it's the medium to, to large operator owners right yeah. because we've seen bridge do it who he's they're not i wouldn't argue they're institutional at whatever 16 17 whatever 20 million square feet to me oh, institutional okay. i mean okay 50 on the road plus million square feet. okay right yeah semi institutional yeah yeah but even back to it i mean i think some of the smart a great example quadrant investments right you've never heard of them if you looked them up they're in dallas based the guy was at a very large firm before and he just he's super trendy and cool and he's doing he, he's doing developments that are boutique office buildings they're more like you would see in a trendy boutique hotel or apartment complex right and so the feel is completely different they're not institutional they they okay, are let's call that yeah let's call that a trend the the resort office yeah uh, totally right there you've yeah. got people have to have a reason to come right exactly. and these are this is all included in f b right and i yeah. think just i'd replace it, yeah. f b with amenitization of office okay. right let's, let's call it the, the the resortification of office totally cool with that right so you've got <laughs> you've got the f b component you've got the programming yeah. which includes fitness social yeah, peloton uh, overall just property management right property management is going to be completely changed yeah yeah and and we're seeing that already. I can't say we're we're seeing it done well in most no. cases, but I, that's what I think is it's like infancy. I mean, you've right. You named a couple of examples here and there. JLL Flex, right? Yeah. JLL Flex yeah. now falls through the property management arm of JLL, right? Ay has been trying to figure out how to do that. Yep. All the big firms. I mean, at one point, CBRE had man. I want to say four different property management platforms that were all trying to figure out the same issue. I mean, I still remember walking into space in Atlanta and there was the security desk, um, the security kiosk, there was a spaces desk next to them, totally not attached. Then there was an X, I think they call it like X, Y, Z or something like that, which was like their cafe with co-working space. And I'm like, <laughs> there is way too much. Where, which desk do I go first? to yeah. to get? my needs met and so i think ultimately we're going to continue to see that right is it's going to become more, more like a hospital a, a hotel play right a hospitality play property management all going to tie into that and i th i think operators are going to play a big part of that if they play their cards right i th yeah because they're equipped to do it okay i'm gonna i'm gonna flip i'm gonna go from resortification of office to the other side i think we're going to see more co-warehousing is yes. that on the list? Is that on your list? <laughs> I, I see that as just continued brand diversification and product offering, right? So yeah. yes, I think there's going to be more of that. I think that's one of them, right? And the problem is, is who's going to be good and who is not, right? I mean, your great example is, I mean, we we can use um, who the Phoenix space that you were trying to help get the galvanized landlord do an assessment of, of co-working and everything else. You showed 
showed up and they had co warehouse and you're like, oh my gosh, it's 100 lease. They have a waiting list. They were like, list. we're they killing it. And, it. and the best thing, if any of the brokers are listening, they were like, yeah, our broker was like, I don't know what to do with this, so we just leased yeah. it ourselves and it's full. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, what uh, is this even? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, then you've got the Sawbox guys, and you've got a cup cube and a couple yep. of these other co where Which, by but the way, even... I'm waiting to figure out how to get these people on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know the Sawbox folks a little bit. Megan reached out because I'm guessing the GWA is looking for something, but I had them teed up for a panel that I did on co warehousing, but I think they were too late. But Dave and Laura Fisher, did you meet Dave and Laura at Juicy? Uh -huh. They're in, yeah, Houston. They're doing co warehousing. <laughs> Another guy yep. who comes to GWA conferences, Seth. Uh oh, I'm going to get it right. Is it Rosen? Oh, Seth, I got to look up Seth's name. He's doing some co warehousing in Albany. So I think we're seeing even like smaller scale operators yeah. get into it. But I at like the same it. time, I'll tell you, there's groups that have tried that are failing. Oh, right. Yeah. Because hmm. they haven't thought through easy, some things. It looks easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. Well, part of them are, I mean, figure out who you are and stick to who you are, right? And yeah. so. You know, this even plays into not a, it's a prediction slash a trend, but landlords that are trying to do flex, right? And we'll get it. I think that'll be three. We'll get into that next. For sure. But yes. there's some of these operators that are like, oh, we're co-warehousing, but we're kind of co-working. And I'm like, well, what are you? Are you an office or are you co or are you a warehouse, yeah. right? You, you got to lean into one for sure. And even Softbox yeah. did it. If you look at their model, originally they had, call it, I'll use, say a third of their office space or a third of their space was office. Yep with some conferencing then they had the reception then they had the warehousing right yep. the last few that i've seen their their offices are actually in the warehouse portion and so it's really co-warehousing that happens to have an office component within yep. the, the warehouse yep. as opposed well they to probably saw that's how people are using the space right that's they're yeah, it's not it's sure. really more integrated than not and so some of these these spaces that i've seen went over the top in their overall build out, right? They spent yeah. too much money. Can't have they bougie co warehousing. Not gonna no, work. Just, yep. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're showing up to do a, you know, you own a sock, a monthly sock company. Yep. How nice does your space have to be, right? Yep, if not you nice. are sending contact lenses bi monthly to Costa Rica from mid the Midwest, why does it matter what your yep. space looks like? Right. And so I think that's just it. And that's just growth. It's just learning. Well, right. it's I just... think that's a sick, like a cycle of industries. Right. So it's like over investment and then people figure out, oh, that doesn't work. I mean, we've seen it in co working. You can't spend, you know, there's a limit to what you can spend and make that back. Yeah. With, yeah. Without a doubt. So okay. I think that's, that's going to continue to be something that gets worked out. But I mean, just a week. Therapy space, right? I mean, we oh had, gosh, we I had love therapy space. Yes. And who would have guessed, right? Is signed two leases with him. Uh, we're working on a few more. Uh, I mean, they're they're pretty aggressive over the next few years on what they want their growth to be. And all they do is counseling space, right? Yeah. Therapists. Um, so they need well, they need a similar build out. Do they push for like heavy TI and free rent? Like a no. Really? I mean, our deals are turnkey, right? Oh, turnkey. We're trying to find, well, you we're know trying what? To That's find really funny because I had two similar models go through my startup school and they also both got turnkey build outs. Interesting. Yeah, but again, their turnkey build out was the last one we got was 48 bucks, right? So we're getting still our office to heavy. Get He's doing an office heavy model and you need, but good. again, we're looking for four to 6,000 yeah, feet. Square feet. Most yeah cases yeah. that are already built out You're pretty talking, efficiently hey, we need twenty thousand feet and we need a hundred bucks a foot yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you can yeah, find yeah. i can go up yeah. and find four to eight thousand feet i know that if i was going to start over man out. that's the model i would do yeah yeah as yeah. opposed to if you're going out to find 10 to 20, you're you're having to find out significant build out, yeah. which by the way, is either really old today or it wasn't built right because yeah. we're in this era where people are like, everything's open and collaborative and we only need four exterior offices and everything else is going to be, you know, neighborhood working. Well, you know, it, and, and part of it too, remember, therapy space is looking for hard wall, hard yeah. door offices. Totally. I can go find millions of square feet of that yeah. that were built in the 80s that we can slap lipstick on and make it work. We're yeah, not and saying it's okay hey, if the offices are a little bigger, I guess, in that case. Yeah. Mm, right? I'm not going, to hey, we need, <laughs> yeah, right? 
you know, you're not having to do all glass office fronts and glasses yeah. in the set and windows, I mean, and doors and everything else. That's a good business So it's a little model. different. So, yeah. you know, yeah. co-warehousing, you've got the specialized space with, you know, the therapy space example. Yeah. You've got people that, I mean, law firms, we've seen that happen already, right? Is you're kind of building out the same kind of space. Some people yeah. tried that a while back. I think we're going to continue to see that as people go out on their own more and more because they're like, why am I part of a firm or... You know, I don't want to go all the way to the urban core. You know, we're going to continue to see that. I think what we haven't seen yet that I th think we're going to see is healthcare, right? And no, that's we've totally a different. seen that. I have had a bunch of folks go through my startup school doing shared healthcare spaces. And a matter of fact, I need to get them on my podcast, putting them on my to-do list. Gosh, yeah. you make me come up with all the hard people and you take all the good people. And, totally. I uh, do make you come up with the hard people. <laughs> you're like, we need to come up with more people. I got to listen to I haven't even been helping you out. I know. I'm just like, Geo. You know what? Because you know it's hard. I can't do it for two podcasts. It's too many people to think, think about. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. And anyway. you're very good about that. You're, you're not ever like, oh, wait, I want them on mine. There's been a couple of times where like, you know what? They'd be better on yours. I've been a little tempted. Right? And typically so, it's like, when they're they're super they're super uptight and they're like, I need pre-questions. I'm like, I'm not the right person because I'm going <laughs> to stump you on purpose. <laughs> and ask you lots of personal questions. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I So I think we're going to continue to see that. I mean, we're seeing it. I you know, part of what I haven't done a whole lot, I need to reach out to a couple of these groups that were doing like these bio med spaces mm -hmm. where you had all this lab space in the middle and then they had their individual offices for R&D or whatever they were yep. doing. Well, like the woman uh, uh, because, from, oh gosh, what is the brand? The woman who was on my panel at the GWA. I'll think of it in a second. Yep. Yeah. And so I think we're going to continue to see stuff like that. I mean, yeah. We are, the, the crazy part about it is people don't think about this. Like we've seen artists co-ops and, yeah. you know, creative types do this for a long time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so typically it's in warehouse space or yeah. tertiary space that's yeah. cheap because. Yeah, very bougie. You know, yeah. But I mean, we're going to continue to see that evolve is just overall use of space and product. Yeah. Okay, so I think we probably both have this on our list. I called it management agreements. You're calling it landlords getting involved. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two sides of that. I think landlords have realized that they need to be in the flex space one yep. way or the other, right? Yep. And the easy part is a lot of those are just going to do more and more spec suites yep. or turnkey spaces. Yep. Um, okay. I think that's an easy one. Yep. But from... The management deal side of it and we had perry on that that was a great example of because people talk yeah. about all these management he, he said the two words that are being overused are management and enterprise Snowflake. oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um and so part of it is they're really partnership deal slash you know some type of percentage rent deal right and so more and more of these landlords are realizing hey we want to participate because we want to say in how it's built out. We want to say in how the the tenants in the, inside the space are, are going to grow within our space or contract or, you know, have a collaboration even where people are going, hey, we need two floors, but then we need another space to contract in and out of to some extent. Um, in some cases, it's even just for meeting space or ideation space or things like that. And so, you know, that's that's a big part of it is what does that overall look like? And, you know, how does that play out? But, you know, I think the management side has been overused and is not uh, there's not as much of a runway as people think there is. Right. Because. And again, I want to be very clear, there's a difference between a management, non-traditional the management deal and the non-traditional retail type of percentage rent yep. or partnership agreement, right? Those are two totally different things. The management deal is is very, it's middle of the fairway, literally landlord, you are putting all the money up, 100% of the money up. You're putting 100% of the money up for the build out, 100% of money up for the FF&E, 100% of the money up for yep. the operation of the business. You are putting 100% of the money up for the operation of the, the triple nets of the building. Right. Yeah. So literally the landlord is a hundred percent responsible. Yeah. The tenant really, and it's not even a tenant. What they are essentially is an Service operator that has right. a hospitality agreement Yeah, is running the space. 
right? So I don't think there's that many of those deals. No, there's not that many of those deals. And <laughs> I'm working on one for a landlord. I won't say where, but he called me and he's like, he did not know who I was. I don't, can't remember how he found me. And I sent him a proposal and he was really nervous. He's like, you know what? I have this, you know, proposal and I think it's a scam. And so how do I know you're not a scam? <laughs> it's like, okay, I totally get it. Let me walk you through like, you know, what my background is and, and what I'm doing and give you a couple of examples. <laughs> He's like, this management agreement thing is, looks like a scam to me. <laughs> I was like, okay, right. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think i mean you're seeing it we're both seeing it we work we, we have a, a lot of overlap right now too we're working on a bunch of similar working on different angles with with a bunch of folks on on these projects but i feel like all of a sudden asset owners property managers like all sorts of folks sort of getting they, they they're starting to get it like we need to get involved here what does that look like some of them want to learn to do it themselves some of them want to most of them want an operator <laughs> yeah a lot a lot of flavors of that but i think we're really starting to see the flywheel on that start to start to spin where'd you go yeah yeah so i think that's that's going to be interesting so it, the, the way that continues playing out because I, a lot of people that have heard the overused buzzword of management deals think that's i mean i even know there's some franchises trying to go after management deals and i'm like guys by the time you pay or franchisees by the time you pay your royalties on a franchise yep. and then you pay uh, some type of management fee and then on top of that who's actually signing for the franchise location the numbers just don't make sense, right? And I think as a lot of these landlords dive in and really take a look at it, as long as these operators look at it, I mean, you and I have run a couple of these courses in different capacities, and hopefully in the next few months, we'll do more and more of them. But the reality of it is, I tell people, are you ready to get a boss, right? Because the minute you sign one of these deals, you have a boss. And I, I think the great example I, that that we use with Perry, Perry was like, oh, trust me, we have people that are literally calling us every week and they want to know exactly what the numbers are and who they are. Actually, no, it wasn't, it, you know what? It wasn't with Scott Chambers. It wasn't with Perry. It was Mark in Dallas that you're talking to and I'm talking to. He's like, oh, I, I can tell you right now, if we ever did one of those deals, my partner would be one of those ladies that would call every single week. And she does currently in the existing space that we have with Common Desk. Yep. And she wants to know what the numbers are, what the occupancy is, what, how many leads they got. How many people toured? How many deals they closed? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, imagine that, right? Imagine getting uh, a handful of those landlords and they'll drive you crazy. And yeah. literally you're doing it for peanuts. Well, I mean, I think that's the thing. You should be all over those yeah. numbers as an operator. That should not be the hard part, but having to spend the time. And of course, then you're like, you're probably never going to win. They're never going to think it's enough. And so just having to go to sleep, worrying about that every night. I hear you, Gio. Jamie. Let's stop and think about it. If there's 8,000 locations, yeah, I would be very comfortable telling you that 75% of those locations do not have that information that you I just know. said. I know. You're totally right, Gio. Okay. You're right. They should. That's all right. I'm saying. I, pick up the phone right now and call Flip <laughs> and ask him what the occupancy is in each of his locations. He 100%. No way. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He just, I missed a call today. He did a KPI session on new locations. Remember, did you see my kick-ass panel? He was on there talking about numbers. That guy knows it. Somebody on his team knows it. Flip might be busy That's playing That's a different story. I would tennis. not say that someone and... on his team doesn't. I didn't say that. I said Flip. Flip's That's too fine. busy playing okay. tennis to know these numbers, yep. right? He prepares and he knows and he's got a team that does it. But my point is there's plenty of people that if if you picked up the, the phone and called the person who your relationship is, that's why example I always use is when you do a deal with Industrious, you're not talking to Jamie Hidari. You're not talking to yeah. Justin. You're not right. talking to Perry. You're talking to someone down the, the same as Comdesk. You're not talking to Nick Clark. Yeah. You're not talking to Dawson. Probably talking and to so Nick that's Clark the reality of you there have you to have the right people that are supporting you to yeah. be able to answer those questions yeah. and know that when they get the call from the landlord, that number one, yeah, they're they professional enough. It. Yeah. Number two, they are able to communicate. And because if you think about it, most, most people that know those numbers are not super outgoing people that can manage a relationship judging as well. the nerds, the number nerds. No, I'm not judging them. It's reality. Okay. 
It's reality. It, the same way as if someone called me and asked me for detail, Jamie, come on. If if you were if you were to ask me to figure out how to finish, you're going to you're going to end this recording right now. Yeah. And you're going to send me the link and yeah. you were to ask me to figure out how to get this on the calendar <laughs> on a date with the right context <laughs> on the right platform. Well, I have an I SOP would tell for you that. I have, okay. we're, we're, you know what? We can skip a few weeks of the episode till you feel better because I don't even know where to go, right? <laughs> I know, but that's so the reality of it. There's there's yeah. a lot of these operators that want to go out and do these deals that have don't have the ability to follow through with what it takes to, to, to do yeah, a management. The reporting. Yeah. I guess you're probably right. I I probably am again, giving my fellow humankind too much credit. Okay. We're it's the long one, Geo. Wait, what else is on my list? I got to go back up to the top here. Co okay, that was it. I put three on there. So management agreements, co warehousing, food and bev, which we've changed to the resortification of office space. You had specialized space, more acquisitions. You also had landlord involvement. What else? So the last one I'll, I'll say is the financial markets, right? The financial markets are going to dictate a lot of what yeah. happens yeah. in the next year. And from multiple standpoints. Number one is there's people that have existing space in buildings that are going to go back to a lender, you know? And so what does that relationship play like? Right. And you mean existing, I think, sorry, the, operators or. Well, landlords. the existing operators, if you're, if you're operating a space in the building and the landlord can't oh, pay their I rent see. anymore, yep. it goes back to yep. bank. Yep. Right. And, and so what? or not rent, they're paying their mortgage. And then right? the bank and is so, like, I'm sorry, who's this on the third floor? Yeah. What is this business model? Yeah. yeah. And so you got to figure that out. Right. So there's yeah. going to be some of that that's affected by the markets. Right. Because there's been because people's loans are coming up and they can't afford to pay. Yeah. I mean, did you know the SBA loan right now is eleven and a half percent? No, I did not know that. That's insane. It's, right? it's like so a credit card. Landlords... Hey, hey, put your bill out on a credit card. <laughs> exactly. Some of these landlords that have that have leased that they have, sorry, they have paper out, they have agreements with their banks. They have notes out at three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half percent are going to start getting renewals on their paper at six and a half, seven to nine percent, right? The numbers just don't make any no, more. It makes sense yeah. anymore. And we're already seeing big, big names, big landlords handing keys back, right? So some of the operators are going to have that happen in space that they in buildings that they're in, and they're gonna to have to figure out that relationship with the bank, right? That's that's the reality of it. You Number two, that. what are we doing about that? I don't what yeah, we have we we need to get an economist on the show. Yes. You're you know, on who, it. Who has one? It's Bill Bennett. Yes, he does. Let's get yeah, um, get get Bill's economist. So the other side of it is you're going to see more and more people that want to buy buildings because there's building buildings are going to go back to them. And I'm already seeing this. People are like, "Well, why aren't we buying buildings?" I'm like, "Well, the buildings that you that are going back to banks right now, right? Number one, you can't afford. Number two. They're not in the right location, right? If yeah. we're trying to build out in Austin and you want buildings in the suburbs of Austin, those aren't going back to the bank, right? They're just, yeah. they're just, those are right? occupied. If those, those are doing it. If you're in the urban yeah. core, different story. Do I think there's going to be banks that buildings that go back to banks in downtown Austin or in the urban court? Yes, mm -hmm. to some extent. But those aren't buildings we want. They're not buildings we can afford. If you want to, if you want to take risk and go into, I guess, gentrifying or financially yeah. struggling yeah. markets and wait it out. You've got enough cash to wait it out. San Francisco, yeah. right? Suburbs of San Francisco to some extent, right? There's going to be that opportunity. Seattle, Minneapolis. I mean, there's going to be some of those markets where you can, but you're going to have to wait it out. Make sure that you buy it right. Make sure you have yeah. enough money set aside. Um And the other part that people don't think about is when they're like, oh, we want to go buy our buildings. I said, well, you realize there isn't a TI package when you buy buildings. You are now responsible for the purchase of the building and for the build out of the building. There isn't a get TI financing package for that, that though. Help you get right. Nobody's giving oh, absolutely. you absolutely can finance it, it at nine and a half, ten percent. Right. It, which right. doesn't make sense anymore, right? I mean, I can tell you, I've had deals fall apart over the last six months over the fact that they made sense at five percent, even five and a half percent. They don't make sense at seven and a half, eight yep. to yep. nine percent. Yeah. They just don't, right? And so that's just for the purchase of the building. Now you're trying to put in all the build out and then all the FF and E, 
right? So let's say you're yeah. acquiring a building for 200 now bucks a foot me. on the low end. Tell me something, but, tell me something. But there's opportunity, but there's op there's people that are going to be able to do that, right? There's opportunity okay. on that side yeah. of it. There's people that are going to swoop in and buy those buildings that go back to the, to the banks that are going to be able to take advantage of that. But the reality is, is it's not going to be easy, right? I mean, financial markets affect everything, but for those of us that are willing to go out and work hard and get in the way of opportunities like you and I ha have already, there's going to continue to be more of those, right? And there is no doubt that my number one desire for my clients is to own their real estate, right? Oh, because you're, I know. You're, you're playing- I just mentioned that on my own podcast. I was like, if anyone had ever- suggested that before I did my first location. Like I would be on the beach right now, not talking to you. No, but I mean, yeah. I just, it, yeah, I agree with you. And so, I mean, you're going to continue to see that. So from financial markets is going to affect a lot of what happens yeah. in the next year. I'll give you another example. We just, we just signed another lease right now. I've got two leases out, three, no, three leases out right now. Nice. One is in Nashville where we've signed yeah. the lease. Yep. And it goes to the lender for approval. Well, so the right. lender has to approve the TI. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, that client of mine yeah. has already had one landlord say, no, we won't sign the lease in Virginia. So we literally negotiated, signed leases to the point where the lender said, we're not, we're not following through with this. Oh, and that was- will not support ago. like a commercial project. No, and it wasn't against co-working. They just didn't right. want to cut the $100 commission check. I mean, the $100 TI check. Oh yeah. So that's one. I've got yeah. two, which are contingent upon SBA lender approval. Right. And so that but that's who's getting a loan at 11%. Oh. The, the numbers work. If you do the right deal, that's why you got to call me. I'll negotiate the right deal okay. because keep in mind. So we're negotiating we're between nine and I've got a deal right now that's got 18 months of free rent, another one that's got 24 months of free rent. So the reality is, is our per in a perfect world, we whether we basically it's going to take us six months to build it out, right? Where we've got free rent for another 12 to 18 months, call it. We're 24 months in. Two years, the financial market looks different than it does today. Yeah. It has even if it's three or four years, you basically refinance at a at a later date and your interest rate comes down. And I think as most SBAs are are fluid anyways. I don't think you're locked in for a time period. So the part that's horrible is it could get worse, yeah. but it could yeah. get better, right? And so 11.5% is pretty yeah, bad. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully we're- And so that's that. just the reality of it is, but those are three deals that I, on my own, currently have tied to financial markets, right? Whether it be a lender that's approving the existing deal that they have with the building or two operators that are out getting their own SBA loans. Yeah. So you're at the mercy of the capital market. Yeah. 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 So, so if those deals don't go through, I'm moving in and your guest <laughs> <Really>? bedroom. <laughs> in Tahoe. Uh, but that's just, that's ultimately what we're having to, to go through is the, and, and it's not the first time, right? People act like the world's, you know, doom and gloom and everything. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, in, in, you and I's professional life, there's been three of these already, right? This is, yeah. it's not like a once in a lifetime deal. I mean, this happens every 10 to 15 years. They just look different. And this time looks very different. Yeah, totally. Okay. 2024, here we go. Let's see. Well, it's going to we'll be an awesome we'll year. Do a, we'll do an end of year review to see how, how our predictions came out. I'm excited. Awesome. Thanks, Gio.